Hello everyone, so we're back for lab uh, number four, uh, intro to molecules. Uh, for activity one, uh, we've been asked to choose uh, first three compounds from um, group one. Uh, and the ones I have, the first one I'm going to discuss is uh, methane, uh, which you see here is CH4. Uh, in our central atom, is going to be our carbon atom. Hydrogen always goes on the outside. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and draw out our Lewis structure and then I'll show you what that looks like. All right, here we have um, our Lewis structure in our dot diagram. Um, as you can, as, oh man, you can't probably read that, but um, carbon uh, has four valence electrons, uh, hydrogen has only one. Uh, and in our chemical formula, we have CH4. That means we have one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. Um, so that gives me a total of eight balanced electrons. Um, I've already went ahead and drawn our Lewis structure. Um, you can see carbon is the central atom surrounded by four hydrogen atoms. Uh, and here I've created a, the pair um, of, a, of, a, of balanced electrons, which are our, which are our bonds. Uh, so this here would be our um, Lewis structure for our methane um, formula, which in this case, CH4. All right, so now we've chosen um, our second chemical formula from our group one. And as you can see here, guys, I've, I've drawn out um, our... Uh, our sulfur floor hexa actually what is that yeah our sulfur hexafluoride um, which contains um, the sulfur contains a total of six balanced electrons the fluorine contains a total of seven um, valence electrons and here I've drawn out our dot diagram with sulfur being in, in our central atom and our six fluorine um, atoms surrounding our sulfur and I've drawn each one with the number of valence electrons so sulfur has six uh, fluorine has seven um, as you can probably see there the little dots and those kind of hard to see and then off to the right I've drawn out our Lewis structure um, reflecting the bonds so each one of the valence electrons that sulfur had around its outer shell has not has now paired up with one of the valence electrons from fluorine, um, so now we're gonna we're gonna move on to the to the next one. Um, here I have PCl7, which is our potassium chloride. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you what the dot diagram and Lewis structure look like for this particular chemical formula. Okay, so now we have phosphorus pentachloride uh, for our next um, chemical formula. Trying to get a, there it is. Okay. So here we have um, the chemical formula for phosphorus pentachloride. I'm just gonna. All right, there you go. I folded my paper that way. All right, so phosphorus pentachloride has phosphorus has a total of five um, valence electrons, and chlorine chloride has seven valence electrons. So I've drawn out the dot 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 diagram. And here I have the Lewis structure showing the bonds uh, for those five valence electrons that phosphorus has, uh, and then the one that it's uh, bonded with for the chloride atoms. Um, okay, so we're going to move on. Okay, so now we're here with uh, the uh, chemical formulas in group two. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hold this up here. See if we can see that. All right. So for our um, for our first chemical formula, we have CO2. Um, most of us will probably already recognize this uh, as carbon dioxide. Um, and as you can see here, carbon has four valence electrons, and oxygen has six valence electrons. Uh, we've draw, already drawn out the uh, dot diagram here, uh, showing that carbon has four balance electrons and oxygen each one of those uh, atoms has 
each six valence electrons. And here we've depicted the uh, Lewis structure uh, showing the bonds between the carbon and the uh, oxygen atoms. Our next from the um, oh, that's much better. Um, our next chemical formula uh, from group two is H2O. Um, hydrogen has two valence electrons and oxygen has six valence electrons. Uh, there you see our dot diagram and our Lewis structure. Um, and then the next one on the uh, from group two, we have NH3. Um, so we here, here we have nitrogen, which has five valence electrons, uh, bonding with three hydrogen um, atoms, which contain one electron each, one valence electrons each, for a total of three valence electrons. So there you see our dot diagram, uh, followed by our Lewis structure. So now what we'll do is we'll move on to activity number two. Um, so here, here shortly. Hello everyone, so we're here doing activity number two, uh, which is gonna consist of linear ge uh, geometry. Uh, now for this activity, we're gonna need our bag of balloons uh, that I have here. Uh, so we're gonna have to inflate a bunch of these. Uh, the first one we're gonna do is, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna inflate two of them approximately the same size and we're gonna tie them together. Uh, so here I have one. And again, we want to approximately get the same size. There we go. Looks like we have two uh, of equal shape. So we're going to go ahead and tie this one. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie the two balloons together in a, in a knot. Let's see if I can do this. All right, so what we're going to do, now that I've tied uh, both of these together, uh, we're going to go ahead and label the model, uh, which is our two electron domain, and photograph it for future use. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and grab the camera so I can photograph this. Looks like I still have one a little bit bigger than the other one, but it's all right. All right, now that I photographed it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and inflate three more balloons because uh, we're going to use that for our uh, uh, three electron domains. All right, so here we have our three uh, balloon uh, diagram. Um, look, I, first, first I started by tying two together, then I uh, just tied uh, the third. Um, so this is going to represent our three electron domains. Uh, we're going to label the model uh, with our permanent marker, uh, and then we're going to go ahead and photograph it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. All right, now that I've photographed it, I'm going to go ahead and do the same. Uh, however, I'm going to inflate and tie four balloons. Uh, I'm going to get the help of my assistant to uh, blow some of these up. Uh, I'm actually getting pretty tired. Uh, so we're going to first tie two of them together and then we're going to take those two sets and cross tie uh, the centers so we're going to have uh, a diagram of a tetrahedral uh, and then we're going to go ahead and tie five balloons together and then six so I'm going to go ahead and do that now uh, I'll be back to show you what each one of those uh, uh, balloon diagrams uh, looks like so just, uh, just be patient with me alright here we're, we have our tetrahedral um, 
uh, what I did, like I said, is uh, got two sets and then I cross tied them. So that's our tetrahedra. I'm going to go ahead and record, take a picture of it. Best way I can. Alright, now, now that I've taken a picture, I'm going to go ahead and uh, start with our five balloon diagram. And I'll be back and show you what that looks like. Alright, so now here we have our five balloon diagram. Uh, kind of all different shaped, uh, but this is our five balloon diagram. I'm going to go ahead and photograph it. And then I'll uh, come back and show you what the uh, six balloon diagram looks like. Okay, so here we have our uh, six balloon diagram. Um, as you can see there, it's it's consists of three different sets of balloons all interlinked together. Uh, so here's our six balloon diagram. All right, so now we're back. Uh, we're going to do activity number three. Um, and for this activity, we're actually going to use our uh, basic chemistry modeling set, uh, which looks like that. So what we're going to do with these, uh, with these pieces here is that we're going to construct three-dimensional models of each molecule from activity one. Um, so we're, we're basically going to be using the following uh, molecular, molecular model pieces to represent each atom. Uh, we're going to use our white one-pronged uh, pieces for our hydrogen models and our light green one-pronged for all of the other atoms. Um, our, and then we're also going to be using our black four-pronged to represent carbon. So we're, going to set, we're going to set that apart. So again, hydrogen, carbon, all other atoms. Uh, we're going to use the blue ones to represent nitrogen. The red ones to represent oxygen. We're going to use the purple five prong uh, to represent atoms with five electron pairs and then the silver for our sil um, atoms with six electron pairs uh, since as you can see here the silver one contains uh, six prongs uh, the purple contains five prongs all right so we're gonna use we're gonna keep those there that's gonna be um, our basic um, um, molecular model pieces uh, that, that represent each atom. So I'm going to start by building uh, my first chemical formula and I'll show you what that looks like and then I'll be back on and, and uh, I'll show you each piece. Alright, so here uh, we have uh, the three-dimensional molecular, molecular model piece. Uh, and I, as you can see here in the middle, I have a black uh, four-pronged piece uh, connected by these little connectors, little white connectors, uh, to four of the white pieces. And if you remember, uh, our white pieces are representing hydrogen. So here we have a representation of one carbon, four hydrogen atoms, CH4. Okay, so this is what CH4 looks like. Our next model uh, will look like this. We have SF6, uh, which is sulfur in the middle. And I have six fluorine atoms, um, which are the little green pieces. And this is what that molecular model looks like. Okay, so our next piece um, is... PCl7 or phosphorus uh, pentachloride and in that representation um, our molecular model piece is going to look like this only I'm trying to pull out the uh, orange I'm sorry the green pieces because I'm going to need them for this next representation
and there you go. Uh, this is our molecular molecular representation of um, phos phosphorose pentachloride PCl5. Uh, so that's what that looks like. And I'll be back to show you what our group two um, compounds look like. All right, everyone. So here uh, now we're back uh, to show you uh, molecular uh, three-dimensional models of our first uh, compound, which is uh, CO2. Um, so in the middle, we're going to have a carbon atom, um, which is uh, represented by the uh, black pieces surrounded by two oxygen. So as you can see here, I have a carbon atom in the center connected to two oxygen um, atoms. So this is uh, CO2. Next up, we have H2O. Um, everyone should basically be familiar with that uh, as it is basically our, uh, what we survive off is water. Um, here we have two hydrogen molecules connected to one oxygen molecule for a, a three-dimensional uh, diet model of H2O. The last one we have is NH3. Um, the blue pieces were nitrogen. So we have nitrogen in the center connected to three hydrogen atoms. Um, as you can see here, I'm spinning it around. Um, but this is NH3. So I'll show you what our group three uh, chemicals look like. All right, guys, so for activity four of our um, molecules experiment, um, we're going to be using uh, data table two. Uh, so basically, we're going to complete data table two using the periodic table of electronegativities and the bonding scale to determine the type of bond that each set of atoms would exhibit uh, should they have formed the bond. Um, so we're going to draw, uh, for covalent bonds, we're going to draw vectors between the atoms showing bond polarity. Um, basically, we're going to be using this data table. And then we're also going to determine the electronegativity difference and bond polarity for each one of those bonds that we used in data table 1, starting with group 1, 2, and 3. Uh, we're going to record our calculations and the bond determination under the data table 1 of activity 4. Um, and once we're done doing that, uh, we're going to add the appropriate bond polarity vectors besides each bond in the perspective drawings under activity 3 of data table 1. Uh, and then we're going to determine whether each molecule exhibits a dipo movement. Um, and we're going to write either yes or no in the space provided under activity 4 of data table 1. Um, and then finally, we're going to determine whether each molecule is polar and we're going to write whether it's polar or nonpolar in the space provided under activity 4 of data table 1. So this is back to our acti uh, data activity activity 4 in data table 1. Um, we're going to here I got to go back and draw our uh, molecule, molecular geometry uh, for each one of my uh, formulas and then this is the data table 1 uh, of activity four in, in this column here. So that's what we're going to do. Uh, so this would basically wrap up our um, experiment. Uh, thank you for joining us. And if you have any questions, feel free to comment in those spaces below.